All right, have I got a story for you guys. So I was moving the camper a few weeks ago and the whole thing almost fell over. We were getting ready to load it on the truck and the whole camper shifted. This jack right here was bent way under the camper. It actually leaned over roughly 15 to 20 degrees, which is luckily it stopped. So I quickly jumped in the truck and snuck the truck underneath it set it down then i jumped online ordered some new jacks these jacks that are on here are roughly 15 years old um, and they're way outdated the new ones are rated at 11,200 pounds so they should be more than enough now i get to figure out how to put those new jacks in because they are way different than the old ones so on the corner where the brackets are on the inside there's another bracket and basically the bolts go all the way through and they sandwich all the material to make a strong connection and these particular brackets are bigger than the old ones the old ones believe it or not held up these ones cover more surface area therefore they should be stronger um, they're a different design that puts the pressure not on the corner, but on the sidewall a little bit, which is stronger. And legs themselves are made out of square tubing rather than round tubing, which square tubing uh, for our application is much, much stronger than round tubing. Anyways, that's what we're working on. Let's get to work. What we're looking at here is the old bracket. These legs connect with these three bolts to this bracket and one, two, three, four bolts go all the way through and sandwich all this material together. Then on the other side, we've got this bracket here and it does the same thing. These two bolts here go all the way through and sandwich to that plate on the inside. Let me show you the new brackets. So the new brackets are way different. These are from Happy Jack. Instead of making the connection point right on the corner. Now, the connection point is around the corner, which I think makes it stronger. And as you can see, they're much taller. So let's take off the old jack. I've got the camper on jack stands, and it's still got the other three legs on the ground. So we're gonna take this off and give it an investigation. So now that we have the bracket off, what we want to do is clean the surface because what we're going to do is put down butyl tape and it's got to have good surface to cling to. So get yourself a plastic chisel, that's what I found works the best for scraping this stuff off. If it gets dull, you just take a file, sharpen it up. You don't want to use metal. Alright, so this, this is the new bracket and it goes on just like that. So I'm gonna have to trim up this piece here. Yeah, I've got a problem here. I've got holes and the bracket's not covering it. I can go to a machine shop here in town and have them build me a new Z bracket. I'll have them build it just like this, but it'll reuse these existing holes. It'll be stronger, which will make me happier. So this here is the backing plate. And you can see it was getting a little bit of water in there. So we're gonna make sure and seal it up extra well so that doesn't happen ever again. This went into that corner and it just sandwiched everything together. The new bracket is much larger, um, so I'm gonna have to make a new one of these. I got my brackets back from Dave. He just welded everything in. He cut notches in the back of that bend and then TIG welded them in. These are the originals. So they just had an indentation that was performing as a gusset, I think this is going to be a thousand times stronger. These new holes are going to line up with my old holes that were in the old brackets. We're going to turn a bad situation into something good because that's what we do. We're destination now. So anytime you're working with raw steel and you want to paint it, you got to take off a layer of chemical that they put on the steel to keep it from rusting while it's waiting to be worked with. You want to take some acetone or pretty sure goof off is the same thing and just scrub it down. Today's the day. Got the new brackets all painted. The paint's had time to cure. So I'm gonna go ahead and install it. The whole reason that I had this bracket remade is because 
I wanted to reuse the existing holes in the camper and well the old one just didn't stretch out far enough to use those holes I couldn't drill into the plate there was no plate there and the reason I wanted to reuse those holes is on the inside of the camper on the inside of the corner there's this backing plate and these holes go all the way through to the backing plate which is threaded and basically sandwiches this clamp together which makes it so so much stronger these are the old brackets as you can see it's a lot longer on this side which is this side of the camper and so we'll be able to reuse those existing four holes these new brackets are quite a bit taller than the old brackets so we got to make a little cut here this trim piece is just too long so we're going to cut it off right there beautiful look at that it's like it was designed that way we got to strip away all that old caulking Get this area prepped and ready. Once we get it all prepped, we'll go ahead and put some butyl tape down. Anytime you're installing anything on the outside of your RV, you need to use butyl tape underneath it. It's an absolute must have. Otherwise, water can get in because you want multiple layers to keep the water out. So you got your butyl tape, you got whatever it is that you're placing on the side of the camper, and then you've got your caulking around that thing. So you've got multiple layers. So next up, we want to prep our surface with some goof off, make sure it's nice and clean. Right, it's time to do a test fit. See how we did. Oh no! So those two holes line up nearly perfectly, and then those two holes are off. So what I'm going to do is cut this trim piece up a little bit more, and then that'll help me spread the distance, and then I might have to drill those holes out a little bit. So I like to draw the shape of my bracket. That way I can put down the butyl tape and I don't waste it. So I just use this butyl tape right off the roll. Start on one end and peel it off. And then you want to press it in. Make sure it adheres really well and then peel the backing tape off. So the next step, you got to find these little holes. Start with that one. As you can see here, I know I did a good job because look at all that butyl tape that's oozing out of there. That's a good seal right there. So that first bracket's pretty solid, but there's another part to it. We're gonna really solidify things. We're not done modifying just yet. As you can see, this ear here encroaching that, so we have to find some way to make that work. Thinking I might cut away a little notch in there. It's already extremely solid. There's two through bolts on this side with this bracket, just like there was the four on the other side. So what I've done is send a marking device through the through bolts to the back of this plate to make our mark where we're gonna make our hole. So now we gotta take this bracket back off and drill our holes out. That was a little close to that other one, but I think it'll be okay. The other one looks good. All right, so those new holes worked. Through bolts went through, and I'm gonna pause this side and move over to the other side and start putting the other bracket on. We gotta get this motor for the leg onto here, like so. But first, it helps to read the instructions. It says here, when adding motors, jacks previously configured as manual crank jacks, the plastic coupler below the cap must be replaced with the metal coupler provided with the new motor head. So, there's no plastic coupler at all. I bought this kit a little bit differently than they normally have you buy it because it saved me about 300 bucks and all link a description to that. So there's this ring. The ring needs to fit right inside of there. And then the spring is right over the top of that. And then the whole contraption goes in here. It's probably best to do it laying on its side. So 
So this is your finished product. One thing I did notice is on my particular camper, if I were to position this head any other direction than the direction that it's currently facing, um, it would not fit, especially with that wire. I don't know if that pertains to you guys, but for me, it had to fit this way, and that's not something you want to find out after, the, after you've done all the work of putting this on there. So. Let's take this electric off of here, change the plug around, do some janky stuff, you know, the use. Alright. Look at that. Give us a little extra. The old plug had a 90 degree and the new plug goes straight. But I need it to do a 90 because there's a wall back there. Luckily it stops just short and it's got good sheathing on it. So theoretically it'll be okay. This is a uh, wiring harness cover made by painless wiring harnesses. I highly recommend them. They make some very good stuff. You just kinda wrap it around and I'll probably put a zip tie on this end here. When it makes that 90 degree angle, this will protect it from getting abrasions from that wood when we're going down those bumpy roads. The zip tie will go on right here and it'll hold that together. First, let's rip this electrical apart. Bye-bye. You always wanna, when you're working with wires this tight, the more you mess with the wire, the less wire you have, and you can't add more wire very easily. So I always try to cut it as close to my original connector as I possibly can. We're gonna cut off a section of this. That's about all we need right there. All right, so you wanna have the crease on this uh, cover facing in the direction that you're gonna bend your wires. That way when the wires bend, it's protecting the area that matters the most. Go ahead and put a zip tie on that. Make sure it stays put and that's it. All right, so next up we gotta clean and prep this area and we're gonna glue that in place with some construction adhesive the old holes don't quite line up so a little glue should help us out here goes nothing see if it works all right so we got the front ones done Time to work on the back. Well, every time I see the sun, the rooster crows today. It's one of the issues of uh, drilling into the side of your camper. I just hit a wire, blew a circuit. I don't know how to solve that problem. It ain't one thing, it's another, right? Yesterday I was installing the new leg and I was drilling into the sidewall of the camper and I must have hit a wire because we blew a fuse inside the camper. I poked around a little bit to see if I could get inside of there and I can't. So the only way in is I gotta take this whole propane compartment out and then get to it from the backside. You gotta remove your propane tanks, remove your propane line. So this is the propane door. Here there's a uh, bunch of silicone that's adhering the door to the plastic. So that needs to be carefully removed. And then I believe the door will come off. And then we've got a bunch of staples, it looks like, holding the plastic in place. We'll have to remove all those. I had to pull the entire propane uh, storage area out. 
and access the wire from the back of the wall. So here, let me take you in for a gander here. So, blue right there, that's the severed connection that I fixed. There's a butt connector in there now. And right here, you can see this right here is metal. So there's a aluminum square tubing going all the way up through this corner. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna drill a hole all the way through here, and then I'm gonna fill this back in, and we're basically gonna sandwich all this material. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna put more pressure on that aluminum, which is where we want it. This is the new plug, as opposed to the old plug. Um, for the jack stand. I need to cut these wires and cut those wires, splice them together, and then install this one. And then I believe we're gonna have a slight collision here between the plastic on the side of this and the steel on the side of the bracket. Um, so what I'm planning on doing is just shaving away some of the plastic material and getting it out of the way. Do a little wire in. Here we have red and black wires. I mean, the black is the ground. Not a pause we got our handy dandy little butt connector. There we go. So I've decided to change things up a little bit on this one. I'm gonna turn it vertical rather than horizontal because I'm gonna need to shave some of this off to make room for the bracket that's going right here. And we're gonna use, for this outside hole, use the one hole as a guide. Gorilla glue! Woo -woo. Now this Gorilla glue is gonna do two things. It's gonna help our connector adhere to the side of the camper more importantly, it's going to keep the water out. Now these two screws here on this side, they're probably going to disappear in the final product, but for now we're going to use them to help this glue set up. Well, it's a lot of excess. Uh, this new plug that I installed is too far this way. I knew that installing it um, 
but what we're going to need to do is go ahead and remove these screws permanently and then we're going to take the cutting wheel and we're going to cut the edge of this off and then we're going to fill in the screw holes with uh, Gorilla Glue. Now that perfectly clears and we'll be able to put some glue back into that spot in order to uh, keep it sealed up and strong. Okay, so the next thing we gotta do, put our backing plate in. So I've cut it to fit. What we're gonna do is place it in there, put pressure up behind the back side of it. We'll just drill through enough to make a mark on the other side. And we'll do that on all of them and then we'll go outside and finish the holes out and then we gotta thread them. And then that way we don't have to use a nut on the back side of this. Alright, so now we got our holes started. So we can just follow those all the way through. We have this side installed now and what we're going to do is go ahead and make our marks on the other side, pull it back out and we'll drill and tap those holes. stabilizer jack and so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna cut this portion off and make a 90 out of it the holes are already drilled it's already painted so now that's gonna go right there spot to attach it right on the leg. So you just gotta trim away this trim piece, make a couple marks, cut it back. Okay, so I got this uh, plate clamped on there. We're gonna roll and tap it. Good to me.
pretty. The holes real good. Send them on through. Check this out. I should have got one of these a long time ago. I've been burning my fingers for too long on lighters trying to do these little heat shrink tubing. Now I got one of these. No more burning my fingers, baby. Check this out. So this is the back passenger side bracket and we have manual slide crank. It's going to be directly in the way of our bracket. That'll work out just fine. The legs are finished, baby. Look at this. Look at how clean that is. Mmm. Loving it. I really like how they came together. It's really good. Mm -hmm. So the next step, we gotta install the control module. So, this is the control module for the old one. And this is the control module for the new one. So it's just a matter of changing the wires out and put the new connectors on and we'll be in business, man. And this one has a section for the uh, slide to plug in. It's an accessory section right there. So I'll be able to put the slide out on our remote control. I am super excited about that.
Alright, this is the moment of truth. Let's see if everything I did works. <laughs> Accessory pan. Woo! I did. <laughs> I have the power! Yo, yo, yo! We're back in the house today! Just kidding, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs>